nice kid things are everything. But for me, it's like the little stuff. It's the opening the door for somebody. It's the saying please and thank you. Today, it's going to be listening to your counselors, or it's going to be following the rules of the games. It's going to be listening to things and learning things. And that's what I like to do when I go places too. I like to just talk about these little nice things because you're going to see them everywhere. Everywhere you go, you're going to see some nice people. You're going to see some not so nice people. But your job is to keep being the nice kid. Your job is to do these little things. Be the good example for everyone else around you. When you're on a team, when you go back to school in the fall, whatever you're doing, you try to do the nice stuff. Can I just tell you some stories today? Yeah. I'm just going to tell you stories. Sound good? First story is about a roller coaster. Yay! Who likes roller coasters or rides Yay. or stuff like that? Whoa, yeah. all right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, nice. Kind of. Kind of, okay. Kind of too, yeah. Who does not like them? Who is just not a big fan of rides, roller coasters? Not your thing. I kind of like it. Me too. I do not like rides. I do not like roller coasters. They freak me out. Now, I have two kids. They wanted to go to a place that you might have heard of. And this place is uh, about an hour away from here, maybe a little bit closer. Now, there's one ride that we uh, happened to go on. But when we went there at first, it was me and my kids and my wife. And we walked in. And Ella started looking around going, whoa, da whoa, dad, dad, whoa. She saw all these huge rides she had never seen before. We walked by one. You tell me if you've heard of this one. We walked by the corkscrew. You know what the corkscrew, you know what the corkscrew is? Love the corkscrew. So the corkscrew, exactly. What is that? So the corkscrew, if you don't know what it is, it's not the highest roller coaster at Valley Fair, but it does go up. It goes down. It goes around a corner, goes upside down once, upside down another time, around another corner, and then it's done. It's actually a really fast ride, like a lot of stuff going on during this ride. Like five loops. Like, yeah, a bunch of loops, a bunch of turns. And so we walked by the corkscrew, and Ella looked at it and went, oh, Dad, will you please, please, please go on that with me? Yes. I don't like rides. I, I don't like roller coasters. They scare me, but now I have a choice. On one side of things, I got to teach my daughter to be the nice kid. And part about being the nice kid is it's compromising. It's doing what other people want to do. It's thinking about other people's feelings, thinking about your friend's feelings. But on the other side, I was scared and I was nervous and I did not want to go on this ride at all. So I looked at Ella, I said, Ella, you know what? Let's do this thing. Let's go, let's try it. She's like, really? You want to try it? I'm like, let's try this. Let's do it right now before I change my mind. She's like, okay, let's go. So we went through the little line. We walked through the gate and we got onto this ride pretty quickly. We barely waited in line at all. I was here and Ella was next to me. And you know those like seatbelt things that come down and they kind of strap you in so you don't, yeah. safety stuff, just like today you're gonna learn a lot of safety stuff. They need those in roller coasters to keep you safe there too, right? So they came down and I was holding onto this seatbelt thing so tight because I was scared and I was nervous and I did not want to be on this ride. And I looked over at Ella and she was crying, like big tears. She said, dad, dad, I'm so scared, I'm so scared. I said, Ella, I am so scared too. <laughs> and the ride took off and it went around the corner and started going up click, click. But halfway up the click, click part, Ella still crying, still big tears. Dad, I'm so scared, I'm so scared. I said, Ella, you're, you're being brave. You're trying this. You got this, you can do this, kind of like today. You might do some new stuff today you've never done before. At least try, at least do that thing. I said, I'm proud of you for trying. Click, click. Click. Now, we're all the way at the top. And then we go down. But here's the thing. Even though I was all the way at the top, even though I was scared, I am a big believer that no matter what situation you're in, no matter if you're nervous or you're scared or if you don't want to do that thing, there's always something good that you can find. There's always something good. People are the same way. There's always something good in people, too. Are we gonna mess up sometimes and say the wrong thing and do the wrong thing? Yeah, we are. But you know what? That doesn't make us a bad person. It means there's some good somewhere. We just have to see it. We have to look for it. When I go to schools, I do a lot of assemblies and gyms. And here's your challenge when you go back to school in the fall or if you go to a gym before that. My favorite thing about gyms and schools, the thing that makes me smile, the thing that keeps my head up, is that every one of them is exactly the same. They're all the same. Every gym has the exact same thing in common. 
And when you go back in the fall, I challenge you to do this. What? Look up in the ceiling and you will find something stuck in the ceiling. Every gym you ever go into, look up, you'll see something stuck. That's the good thing I do when I go to, when I go to schools. I see your faces, I see you smiling, and I look up, I go, there's that thing. That's your challenge. Always keep your head up. Keep your head up. If you look down like this all the time, and we look in the ground all the time, you're not gonna see all the good stuff around you. Yeah, keep your head up. Look for the good stuff. It's sunny, kind of sunny today, I guess. It's nice outside. You get to play outside later on, it's fun. Keep that head up a little bit. And that little thing in the ceiling at schools keeps my head up a little bit. On the roller coaster, I was way up here. And I was nervous, and I was scared. But the good thing was, it was a nice day out. And I could see everything out on the horizon. It was a nice, pretty day. And I got to hang out with my family for the day. That's a good thing, too. All these little things, all these little nice things, the good things, look for them. And I was on the roller coaster. And then it started tipping and tipping and tipping and tipping. Ah, it went down and we were on the corner and it went upside down once and upside down another time around another corner and we were done. And my heart was going crazy. And I looked over at Ella and she was still crying. Still big tears. She said, Dad, Dad, that was so scary. That was so scary. I said, Ella, we're, we're done. You did it. You were brave. Good work. She said, but it was so scary. I said, I know, but we're good. We got off the ride. We started walking down the little sidewalk to meet my wife and my son. They didn't want to go on the ride. They stayed back. Halfway down the sidewalk, Ella, still crying, still big tears. We get all the way to the end where my wife and my son were waiting. And my wife looked at Ella and said, Ella, did you like it? Was it fun? Did you have a good time? She said, yeah, I loved it. It was great. It was so much fun. Still crying. It took her about a minute Ooh, to kind of catch her breath. No more tears. No more crying. And she looked up at me and said, Dad, can we do that again? I guess what? We went four more times in a row. It was so much fun for her, and I have to admit, I had some fun too. I kind of liked it. But guess what? We have these things. We have things that make us nervous. We have things that make us scared. We have things that we cry when we're scared. That's totally normal stuff. But what you're going to find out is if you take that little step, if you try that little thing to kind of get over that fear, sometimes you realize, hey, you know what? That's not that bad. Or you know what? Actually, I kind of like that thing. Or you know what? That thing that I'm kind of scared of can help somebody else out. That's what I try to do. I try to do two things with my life. That's it. I try to have fun, I try to help people. That's it. Have fun, help people. That's all I want to do. If I can do those things, I know I'm trying to be the nice kid. Maybe you woke up this morning like, I don't know if I want to go to this. I don't know what's going to go on. But you know what? I know by meeting your counselors here for the last 10 minutes, that's all I've known them for. I know you're going to have fun today. I know the stuff that you're going to do that you're going to like, you're going to enjoy. So keep looking for the good stuff. I have a golf class with some kids, and we play for prizes. And that's my favorite part about golf, is that we play for these cool prizes. One of the prizes is this in our class, and we have this game where we set this golf ball down on one side, and we come to the other side, and we put our other golf ball down that we're using right here. And just like mini putt, just like you played, we try to putt our golf ball in to this golf ball. The goal is to hit that golf ball. If we hit this golf ball, you get to keep this golf ball. You get to take this golf ball home. That's one of the games in one of my classes. And a couple years ago, I had two brothers in my class. Their names were Francis and Ollie. Francis was the older brother. Ollie was the younger brother. And during one of our classes, we had the golf ball down here. And Francis really wanted to try this. So he was kind of on one side. He put his golf ball down. He tried and he missed. So he went and got his golf ball and he put it back and missed again. Got it, put it back, missed, missed. Missed, kept missing, kept missing, kept missing. He's kind of getting frustrated. He's kind of sad. He's kind of mad at himself at the same time. But he kept trying, he kept, kept trying. That's what I liked. But he kept missing and kept missing. And it was the end of class. And I said, all right, kids, it's time to clean up. It's time to go home. He's like, no, no, Brian, 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 can I just try a few more times? I'm like, sure, go ahead, Francis, try a few more times. Missed, missed, missed. Then he hit it, finally. 
after tons and tons and tons of tries, and he was so excited. He was pumped. He's like, yes, yes, I finally won this thing. I can't believe I won this. This is so awesome. He was so excited. And then I watched him. And he walked over to his younger brother, who was standing on this side. And he handed him the golf ball, and he said, here, I won this for you. I'm like, wow. I was standing over here with a few of my other instructors, my other counselors. And I said, check that out. That kid tried and tried and tried. And he didn't even try for himself. He tried for someone else. He was getting frustrated. He was getting mad at himself. But all he wanted to do was win this golf ball for his little brother. And I thought it was one of the coolest things I've seen. All it takes is this little stuff. Do these little things today. Do these little things at home. High five people, compliment people, fist bump people, anything you can do. And when you do mess up, it's OK. Learn from that thing and keep moving on. I've messed up just like you've messed up. But we can keep being good people. We can keep looking at each other and finding that good in each other. So that's your goal today. Two things. Say something nice to someone and do something nice for someone. Do you think we can do that? That's all I need to do. Say one thing nice, do one thing nice. Here's your hint. You're already doing it for me. You're being respectful to me. You're listening to me. You're already doing stuff already without thinking about it. That's the best part. Campers, my name's Nico, okay? And I'm gonna run you guys through some pretty easy, like first aid stuff that you guys can use if any of your friends or family ever get sick. But before I do that, I have to introduce you to the friends that I have with me that are gonna help us learn this, okay? So, the first friend that I have here is Frank. Okay, what do you guys notice right off the bat about Frank? He ain't got no arms. What else does Frank not have? Clothes. He doesn't have clothes, but he doesn't need any. We couldn't find any that were his size. What else doesn't he have? He doesn't have any legs. Do you guys want to learn about how he lost his arms and legs? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's, listen, it's, in, it's embarrassing. Frank doesn't like that I tell the story, but I'm going to tell you guys a story. But you have to keep it a secret from the rest of the campers, okay? So, Frank, believe it or not, isn't a great listener. So, when Frank was younger, he would sit at the kitchen table, and he would sit at school in his desk, and he would burp as loud as he could every time, just being obnoxious. And Frank's mom said to him, if you keep burping like that, your arms are going to fall off. Do you think that Frank listened? So one day, Frank burped, and what do you think happened? His arms fell off. Now here is the most embarrassing part. You want to know what else Frank used to do all the time, which is super rude? He'd fart. He'd fart wherever he goes. And he'd fart in school, and he'd fart at the table, and his mom said, if you keep farting like that, your legs are going to fall off. What do you think Frank did? How he, he kept farting, farting, and his legs fell off. How is he going to go to the bathroom? So now, I got to carry Frank with me wherever I go. But he's dead. No, he's alive. He's just sleeping. He just sleep. OK? So Frank, Frank had a bunch of kids, and guess what? None of his kids have arms or legs either. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to run you guys through this lesson with Frank and Frank's kids. OK? I'm going to give each group, shh, campers, eyes and ears on me, please. I'm going to give each of you guys one of Frank's kids to practice with. Take good care of them. They ain't got no arms and legs, so they're kind of helpless, all right? Who here in this room has heard of CPR before? What do we do CPR for? Right. So, sometimes, right, people don't feel good. And sometimes when we're not feeling good, our hearts are tired. They get tired and they need help. So if my heart is tired and I need help, do you think I'm going to be able to do that by myself? Or am I, I going to need someone to help me help do that for me? I'm going to need someone to help do that for me, right? So... I'm going to teach you guys a very, very easy thing to do. 
If you come across a friend or a family or someone at the playground who isn't feeling good and we need to help their heart get back going until we can get help there. So the first thing that we need to do if we see someone that's not feeling good, who is the first person that we need to tell? No. 911. 911 or an adult. If there's not an adult readily available, what number do we call? 911. 911. Okay. You would tell them. You would just say, someone's at the park, someone's at my house, they're not feeling good, and I need an ambulance. So it's very, very easy. We're going to use both hands. Yep. We're going to put one hand right in the center of the person's chest, eyes on me, eyes on me. We're going to take our second hand, and we're going to put it on top of the hand that we've already put on the chest, okay? It doesn't matter which hand goes first, whatever you guys are most comfortable with, okay? Once that happens, all we're going to do is we're going to push down on their chest, okay, as hard as we can. We're going to push down on their, on their chest, and then we're going to let our bodies kind of bounce back up, and we're going to push down again. And we're going to just keep doing that, just like this. So what this is doing is it's helping someone's heart keep going, all right, if their heart can't do it by themselves. And this is all we have to do, okay? We don't put our mouth on anyone, on anyone else's mouth. We don't do any of that. All we do is put two hands on their chest, and we push up and down on the chest until someone tells us to stop, OK? Wait, what is that called again? CPR. Okay. So what this is doing is it's keeping, this per it's keeping this person going until 911 can get there. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what I would like you to do with your counselors I would like you guys green to get in your group, orange to get in your group, counselors, I would like you guys to run everyone through CPR, and we're gonna practice on these dummies that each group has, okay? So everyone takes turns. If you guys have any questions, ask your counselors, and they'll walk you through it, okay? My name is Tara, I'm one of the naturalists at Springbrook. Anybody been to Springbrook Nature Center before? Nice. Anybody go to Stevenson or Hayes? Have you had a naturalist in your classroom? I bet you have. It might have been me or somebody else, right? Somebody else. Somebody else. Mr. Cody. Mr. Cody. Cody. He's a definite favorite for sure. Yeah, yeah. Today, you are going to learn a little bit about how to be safe outdoors. I have some fun stuff for you today. So we are going to learn how to be safe in the outdoors from the things that are in the outdoors all of the time. Animals right? We can look at the things that animals do outside and figure out if some of their strategies to stay safe, warm and cool and aware of their surroundings will work for us as well. So are you ready for a challenge? Yeah. Sure. I brought with me today three categories of cards. You're going to learn how animals stay cool outside, which is important for this season, right? You're going to learn how animals stay warm outside, which I know seems ridiculous right now, but you all live in Minnesota, so it is going to change, right? You're going to get cold at some point. And you're also going to learn how animals stay aware of their surroundings. So how are they noticing the changes in things? Are they noticing whether or not there's something to eat or something that's going to chase them outside? And being aware of your surroundings is super important for humans as well. So in your table group, I'm going to hand you one of these packets of cards. There are four of them. On the front side, it asks you a question. Something like, how do koalas stay cool? You know, all of the Minnesota koalas we have, right? Do we have koalas in Minnesota? No. Yeah, we don't. Unless you go to the zoo. Right, yeah. If you go to the zoo, we have bears in Minnesota. So you're going to try and figure out in your group, brainstorm together, I don't know, how do koalas stay cool? I wonder what it is. After you brainstorm for a second, you'll be able to lift up the front cover and find out the answer. Then I want you to think about, oh, that's how koalas stay cool? I wonder if I can do it too. After you've gone through all four cards, you are going to decide on your favorite, your favorite strategy. And then you're going to call an adult over who hasn't seen your cards already, and you are going to act out your strategy and see if they can guess what you're acting out. You're going to get a chance to see all three decks of cards, I promise. So I'll move them around. You can choose a different adult every time to act out 
your strategy for or the same one. It's entirely up to you. You have the power here. After we finish with that, I do want to tell you I did bring an animal with me today. And after we learn about how animals stay safe outside, you're going to get a chance to meet a predator. It's not venomous, nor is it poisonous. If you eat it, it probably would make you ill. So please don't eat it. Okay. But I'll tell you more about it when we get to that point. And then if we have some time at the end, I have a fun game. It's not a dog. All right, where are we no. acting it out at, guys? Right. Oh, we're almost at acting All right. out. Penguins stay warm yeah. together. How do they stay warm? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. What are you guys all going to do? Get close. They use their tails as a shade. Get close. So they hide in the tail. close. Oh, yeah, this yeah. is warm, yeah. 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 Is Patrick going to guess? Yes. OK. Rabbit. Uh, no. Elephant? Uh, So they're acting out how does an animal stay aware. So not hot or cold. <laughs> All right. What's another strategy we could try out that we learned? My. Ooh. So tell me about the chickadee. You're going to shiver for a while? They can shiver and then it can get their like, heat in them. Yeah. Have any of you been so cold in the wintertime that you were like, ooh and you started shivering, that's your body saying, yeah, you need to be warmer. So I'm going to move you a little bit to be able to create some more body heat. Aiden, what's your, what's Fox. your foxes? We use our tails to like, um, use it as a blanket. Yeah, as a blanket. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like, yeah. yeah. So do any of you have tails? Could you use a blanket? Yes. And could you like curl up a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, that would work too. Any other ones? Charlie, got another one? Yeah, how are you going to use the koalas plan? Like you lay on things that are cold. Yeah, you find something cooler than you and, and hug it or lay on it, that'll make you a little cooler. Yeah. I think the penguins. Yeah, how does the penguin, what, what would you do for the penguin uh, trick? They would like cuddle up. Yeah. So if you were cold outside and you were with you or a bunch of people that you knew, could you stand really close to each other and share yes. body heat? That would definitely work. So I told you before I brought a predator. What's a predator? Uh, Ryder, what's a predator? It's an animal. It's an animal, it's it's an animal that what? It's, it's, it's an animal. It's an animal that um, will eat that, that will eat some other animal. Yeah. yeah, it's an animal that will hunt and eat another animal, right? This is Squirt. He is a painted turtle. They are native to Minnesota. You can find them all over the place. If you go to a pond, you've probably seen one of these guys sitting on a log and sunning himself. Uh, he is a predator. He eats fish and worms and bugs that he can find inside the water. Because he's a predator, his eyes face forward, kind of like yours, because you are also a predator. Yep, because you can see really well in front of you. Gives you really good depth perception. He can do the same thing. This is a male turtle, this painted turtle, you can tell because he's got really long claws on his front feet. Campers, let's make sure we're being respectful, please. I will tell you before you decide if you're gonna to touch this turtle, that this turtle goes to the bathroom whenever it wants to. <laughs> and in the water. And I just took him out of the water. So there's, I guarantee you, there is turtle poop on their shelves. So you have to decide if you wanna be able to touch that or not. I do have hand sanitizer with me that you can clean off your hands. You don't care? I don't we care. cannot, we are not going to touch the head of the turtle because that's where the bitey parts are. Turtles don't have teeth, but they have strong jaws and a bony ridge around the outside of their mouth. And so they could bite you because any animal with a mouth can, right? So we're not going to touch his face. That's kind of a scary thing. Imagine if you had a giant mammal in front of you who was like, hey, I want to touch your face. If I bring him around and you want to touch him, you can touch him with one finger. Do not touch your face after you touch the turtle until you get some of our hand sanitizer because there is turtle poop on the shell. Remember, we don't need that to go in your eyes, nose, ears, or mouth because that would make you ill. Unintended injury to the, is the leading cause of death for children ages 0 to 14. Unintended injury. So just horse playing or riding bikes or whatever, 
and I'm in this wheelchair because I had broke my neck in a motorcycle accident. Actually, 50, 52 years ago, at the age of 18, I broke my neck in a motorcycle accident when a drunk driver, a hit and run drunk driver, turned into my lane with no time to stop. And uh, I am now paralyzed from the shoulders down, unable to feed myself or dress myself. So after losing the use of my arms and legs, I had to decide what I was gonna focus on. Was I gonna focus on what I had lost? Or was I gonna focus on what I still had? So Mary, could you go to the next slide? So with this, boys and girls, I would like you to put on your imaginary thinking caps, okay? So I want you to be doing some thinking. Because what if you were me? What would you choose? To focus on what you lost or what you still had? Let's go to the next slide here, Mary. Can you read this? The same water that boils an egg hard also boils a potato soft. Now, what does that mean to you? And for me, years ago, I had to focus on, you know, was I going to be looking at all that I lost? And, you know, the list of that would be like a mile long. Would that make me happy or would that make me sad? It would make me pretty, really sad, wouldn't it? And so what I chose was to focus on what I still had, or what I still have, and what is that? What do I still have? It's one word, four letters. Yes. Life. Yes, it is. I have life. When I wake up in the morning and I can breathe all on my own, I know it's gonna be a great day. For you kids, you wake up in the morning, instead of thinking of all the cares of the day, just stay there a while and simply move your great toe, your big toe. And if you can move your big toe, that means your whole central nervous system is intact. And that should give you applause, knowing that it's gonna be a great day. Our lives, would be turned upside down when I borrowed a friend's motorcycle against my parents' warning and ended up in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. And this happened as if it was yesterday. I hit a drunk driver as he made a left-hand turn right in front of me. And as I entered the intersection of Lake Street and James Avenue, that's when he turned in front of me. And with no time to stop, I squeezed the brakes of the motorcycle. Everything turned into slow motion. I hit the car with my, with my uh, helmet. I went over the handlebars, hitting the car's roof line. And when that happened, everything went black. I saw stars, heard nothing. And I woke up flat on my back with a crowd of strangers around me. I heard myself saying, is my bike all right? Is my bike all right? While there was a man kneeling down on my side trying to take my helmet off. The pain in my neck was excruciating. It felt like a hand grenade had blown up inside. Moments later, the ambulance came, put me on a backboard, got me into the ambulance, raced me down to General Hospital in downtown Minneapolis, the county hospital. And that's where a team of doctors quickly had to cut all my clothes off, shave the hair off the top of my head, and then, as gross as this will sound, they had to drill two bolts in the top of my head 
to secure my neck because they had to take me to surgery. They had to take a bone from my right hip, put it into my neck, fuse it into my neck. And that was really the first day of my 50 plus year journey as a quadriplegic. And this is your spinal cord, or this is your backbone. And the backbone is made up of 24 different vertebrae. And your spinal cord is on the inside of this column. The spinal cord is made up of cables, nerves that are running through these bones here. And then they branch out across your shoulders, down your arms, down your legs. So I've got a homework assignment for you. And that is tomorrow morning, I want you to wake up in slow motion. And I want you to focus on the movement of your hands and your fingers as you wake up and you stretch, you wipe the, the uh, sleep out of your eyes, you pull the sheets down, you get out of bed, you go into the, bed, into the uh, bathroom and you brush your teeth. All of these movements, all of these movements are, uh, are really gifts from God and they can so easily be taken away. All right, I've got some questions for you kids. And that is, what did I tell my parents that I would never do? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes, that I would never get on a motorcycle. And what were the consequences? Yes. I got injured, yes. Yes. How do you think that made my parents feel? Disappointed. Really sad, really sad, really sad. Yes, I mean, it was so serious. They, uh, getting mad wasn't gonna do a bit of good, but it just was a shock to them. How about my, how about, how about my siblings? How do you think that my accident made them feel? Sad as well. I had two brothers at that time, my accident. One was six, the other one was two. And I remember my mother telling me that the two-year-old that following morning came upstairs or into uh, the kitchen where my mom was. And uh, my name is Don. My childhood name was Donnie. And my brother Doug asked, where is Donnie? Because he knew that I was not in my bedroom. And all she said to the little two-year-old brother was, He's not going to be home for a long time. And my accident was in the middle of August, and I did not come home until Christmas Day. And that was only for a couple of hours. What do you say we switch gears and I show you some of my artwork drawn by mouth? Have you ever heard of people drawing by their mouth? Yeah. You think it's possible? When I first tried it, I said to myself hundreds of times, I cannot draw with my mouth. I would try it and I'd get frustrated and I'd whip that pencil out of my mouth. I'd try it the next time. It was just the hardest thing I'd ever tried. And then a good friend of mine named Trisha brought me a gift and it was a pint-sized tin can with eyes on it. I said, Trish, what in the world is that? And she explained to me, the gift I gave you is an eye can. And so let me show you. you are you ready to be out? Are you ready to be wowed? Let's go ahead here.
I'm a game warden, so what we do is we police things that have to do with fish and game and the environment, all right? So this is my patrol boat. So I go and I work out of my boat a lot. In the winter, what do you guys think I work out of? So, so sometimes my truck or a snowmobile. What else do you think I might work out of? How about a four-wheeler? Anybody ride four-wheelers? I'm driving. Yep, so I ride four-wheelers for work too. Sometimes I'm out on a jet ski for work, pretty cool. Or cross-country skis in the winter time or snowshoes. So we're a police officer, but we do something a little bit different. Now, do you guys know um, what the DNR is? Do you know what DNR stands for? Very good. Department of Natural Resources. <laughs> um, so now all of our natural resources, that's everything that's here naturally, right? So our water, our plants, our animals, our air. We care about our natural resources really, really big here in Minnesota. So what are some safety items you think maybe I'll be checking for in a boat like this if you guys are out in a boat? Any safety items you should have with you? Life jacket. Life jacket? Sunscreen. Sunscreen might help you. Yeah, you don't want to get Right. Another safety item you have to have in the boat. Anybody know? So you guys were just in the fire hall, right? Yeah. Fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher. Yep. So you have to have a working fire extinguisher in the boat, and you have to have some sort of a sound-producing device, so a whistle or a horn or something like that. Let's back up and talk a little bit about life jackets, right? Have you guys seen life jackets like this? pretty standard, right? They work for just about everybody. Maybe even Lisa over here. She loves that color. That's her favorite color. Love pink life jacket. So yep. So that's a perfect life jacket for Lisa. What do you guys think? Does it look good on her? Yeah, it's pretty cool life jacket. Wait, what? She needs to loosen the straps. Loosen the straps? Okay, well that might help. What do you guys... Do you guys think it's gonna work? No. No? It might, it might just be a bit too small. Okay, well here's one way to check. So Lisa, on the inside of the life jacket, there's a label. Yep, so it'll give you a weight amount. It'll tell you if it's for youth or for adults. So that's really important because you wanna make sure that you have a life jacket that fits you. Do you do you guys think this is more of an adult? This says adult on it. You think this is a little bit better for Lisa? Yeah? Do you think it's gonna work a little bit better for her? Probably, okay. Um, so this is a pretty comfortable life jacket if you're gonna be canoeing or kayaking because it's cut up a little higher. What's this cool yellow thing that's on here? You guys see it? What's attached to the zipper? Okay, so if she was to fall in the water, she'd be able to make noise, right? So what do you guys think about how this fits on her? Do you think it's gonna keep her floating? Yeah. yeah, because she's pretty small and this is an adult life jacket, right? What if she falls in the water though? Put your arms up. Is that gonna work? No. no, that's not gonna keep her. She's gonna sink to the bottom. Thank you, you can have a seat. So you gotta make sure that if you're gonna go out in the boat this summer, that you have a life jacket on that fits you. If you're 10 and under, you're required by law to wear a life jacket if the boat is underway. So that means if it's not anchored, okay? So if it's drifting or you're trolling or the motor's powered up, you need to have a life jacket on. You have to wear it. And it has to be a life jacket that fits. So if I was to come and see one of you guys wearing an adult life jacket, I'd probably still stop you and make sure that you need to have a life jacket that fits you. Even if your parents are with, if you're in a boat, you need to have that life jacket on if it's underway. Also, anyone on a jet ski has to wear one, even adults. And when you're tubing, you gotta have one on too, okay? Yes. You guys are gonna wear them when you're tubing? Yeah, that's pretty important. Now, my friend Lisa here, she really likes to go out in the boat. And she's a really, really strong swimmer, okay? Like, she could kick my butt in swimming any day. Yeah, she totally would. So, Lisa might wanna not wear a life jacket. Now, what if Lisa and I are out in my boat and Lisa likes to take a lot of pictures, okay? Have you ever been really focused on something when you're taking a picture that like you run into something or you trip? Yeah. Okay, so what if Lisa does that in my boat and she trips and falls out of my boat? She could swim, just save the body of your camera. She could swim, but she might lose her camera, okay? What if when Lisa falls out of my boat, 
she bonks her head on my boat. Yep, she'd be knocked out. How good of a swimmer is Lisa going to be if she's knocked out? Not a good swimmer at all. What are some things that I could do to help Lisa if I'm in the boat and she fell out so I can help save her without drowning myself? Okay, but what if she's not awake? I don't want to go in the water with Lisa because Lisa's going to pull me under. Okay, so I could throw her a life jacket, right? Have her grab the life jacket and she's holding it. Or, or it, maybe she's able to put it on, okay? Now what can I do to help rescue Lisa? Like go grab her? So if I'm like this and I lean over, what's she gonna do? She's gonna pull me in because there's not a good way to hold on up here and help her in without her pulling me into the water. So what's another idea? What if I hand her something so I can have a good solid base and I can pull her closer to the boat so she can grab onto the boat herself and rescue herself? So you got to be calm and think of how to help somebody without putting yourself in danger because I don't want to be rescuing two of you and it does happen, especially where parents might go to help their kids or kids might go to help their parents and it does happen where it ends up being the rescuer that drowns and we don't like to see that. So be very, very smart about it if somebody needs your help in the water. Brilliant. Can you say that louder? Or she could just wear the life jacket. Right? Did you guys hear that? If she was just wearing a life jacket the whole time, I wouldn't have had to worry about it, right? She would have probably been able to swim over to the back of the boat and climb in all on her own without needing my help. I'm going to introduce you to my partner, Finn, uh, about me. I've been a police officer here for about 16 years now. Finn's been a police officer here for five and a half years. Finn is a... Your brother's name is Finn? Your dog's brother's name is Finn? That's a great name. Um, Finn is a German Shepherd. He is eight and a half years old. Finn is what we call a narcotics detector dog and a patrol dog. So Finn does two things. He can find stuff that people aren't supposed to have, really bad, ishy stuff that can hurt people. He can find it, tell us where it is, and then we can get rid of it for people. Uh, the other thing Finn can do, he can smell people on the ground and then follow where they walked. So like you didn't like what your mom said to you or something and you accidentally walked out the back door, maybe we can come try and find you guys. So everything we do, we do based off of play and off of reward. When he does something good, he gets a reward. When he doesn't do anything good, he doesn't get anything. So we try and make everything a little bit of a game. So one of the big things we do is called obedience. He'll... You just sprayed me with water with your tail. That was fun. Okay. Heel. Okay, so the goal here, Finn's not supposed to leave my side, even though there, there's a whole bunch of human distractions around. So imagine a whole bunch of ice cream sandwiches sitting here, and you have to just keep walking around with me. Not very fun. Good. Down. Hopefully he laid down, otherwise I don't look very good right now. Oh, he laid down, that's good, good, stay. And I talk to him like he's a little baby so he knows I'm excited for him. Yes, good. Sit. I mentioned a couple minutes ago that Finn can use his nose to smell stuff that we can't see, right? So he's trained to find bad stuff, to tell us, sit, to tell us where it is. So then police officers and firefighters can get rid of the bad stuff and it doesn't hurt anybody, okay? So all I'm going to tell you guys is somewhere between this garage door and that blue table over there, I hid something that isn't supposed to be there. Let's see if he can find it, even with all this wind. Hey. See, go. Okay, so he sniffs everything, he checks everything. What are you doing?
Who thinks he's trying to tell me that something's back here? He did hit his head. He's okay. He's got a really strong head, I promise. And Finley found the hiding box. So that was pretty good, buddy. Nice job. You did that on your own, yeah. Funnest game in the world for him is playing tug of war with, with me. Unfortunately, you guys can't see him jump too hard here because the floor is all slippery, but we'll see what we can do. Stay. So now, Finn should not release and come at me until I tell him to. Stay. He's pretty, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, he's pretty amped up, though. Good boy. All right, let's see what he does. Yes! Oh, oh, oh. you okay? Sorry. <laughs> oh, good boy. Good boy. Good. So, we play tug of war. Now watch. Out. Down. No big deal. Yes. So, like I said, when we play a game, when he does something he's supposed to, he gets his reward back. And to him, this is a reward. Out. Down. Good. No big deal. No big deal. Yes. Good. And then I go like this, and he'll walk around me like he's the proudest boy in the world. Yep, let me get my hand out. Thanks. What did you get now? What did you get? So he thinks he's pretty cool. All right, our first person is Charlie. Charlie, come on up. Round of applause for Charlie. We'll go through Good job, Charlie. Good job. Good job, buddy. Maya, you are next. Come on up. Good job today. Good job, Maya. Brindley, come on down. Thanks for joining us. You did great. Good job. Pablo, come on over. Grab your award. Good job, buddy. High five. Thank you. Gus, come on down. Nice job. Good work today. Aiden, come on over. Hard work today, Aiden. Nolan, come on down. Good job, Nolan. Hard work today. Good job, Nolan. Amara, come on over. Good work. So glad to have you. Noah, come on down. Great job, dude. And Cassidy, great work today. Give them all a round of applause. Thanks, guys. Purple team. All right, first for the purple team, Lewis. Come on down. Here you go, buddy. Nice job today. That stuff is Bryson. Congrats, buddy. Nice job today. Caleb. Great work today, buddy. Uh, Emery. Nice job today, buddy. Good job today, Emery. Indiana. That stuff is Ryder. Great job today, buddy. Rodrigo. Thanks for coming out today, bud. Minecraft hat. Lucy. Aurora. Ariana. That's for today. And then Lewis. Come on up, buddy. Oh, you got yours ready. Perfect. Orange over here. All right, Madison Penny. Lincoln. More stickers. Hi, right, Lincoln. Good job. <laughs> Henry. Taking high fives. Good job, Lincoln. You want stickers? Good job, 
come on down. Yeah. Kylie, you're next. Come on down. Juan, come on down. Good job today, Juan. Good job today. Ashley, come on down. Good job today, Ashley. Good job, Ashley. And last but not least, Ben, come on down. Hello, we're the green team. Woo! I got my campers up here? Perfect. First up is Emma. Woo! Emma! Good job, Emma. Number two, Adeline. Woo! Adeline, great job. Number three, Ava. Ava. Number four, Augustus. Six, number five, Yasu. Awesome job today. Number six, Carson. Yeah. Woo! Number seven, yeah, Sophia. Yeah. Number eight, Brooke. Yeah. Woo! Good job, Brooke. Well, congratulations, safety camp kids for a successful day. Let's give them a round of applause, everybody. Thank you for coming today. This has been a production of Fridley Municipal Television. Thanks for watching.